Toronto and KGO Radio, we opened with Dr. Harry Edwards and his perspective on race in America, which is totally understandable. The verdict was proper because there is doubt on both sides. Zimmerman is not a saint. Trayvon, not a saint. Nobody was a saint in this. Dion Price has written a column that I found to be very, very interesting and therefore asked him to join us. Among other things, you are a life coach, if I'm not mistaken, and you have life lessons that you got out of this trial and others. Good morning, Dion. Good morning, Ron. Thanks for inviting me. Now, what do you what do you take out of the verdict? I mean, first of all, I'll ask you the same question I asked Harry. Was the verdict proper? Well, I, I think the, the prosecution approach was different. I think there should have been an option of manslaughter, which would have uh, pacified everyone. Everyone knows that Trayvon Martin is no longer here because of the actions of Mr. Zimmerman. So, uh, But the, the way the prosecution presented the case, it, it left many options. But it said it had to be done with ill will, hatred, or spite, and they couldn't prove that, and that would right, be manslaughter. Right. Well, the, um, the, the argument that is is that it, the... Um, the, the death was a result of someone else's actions, and that that could have been involuntary manslaughter. But that wasn't that was that was that was the fault, I, in my opinion, that the prosecution didn't approach. Now, but, go ahead. I'm sorry. But my 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 lesson is this: is that the bigger picture, and not being not a politician, not a an, an an attorney. I think the bigger lesson here is to empower the lives of those. Uh, Trayvon Martin and many young African American males. That's what my mission is. How can we learn from this? Oscar Grant and uh, Trayvon Martin and all these other tragedies that are happening. What can we do? What can we do? So what I approached with this article was, what can we learn from it? There are so many life lessons. How do we approach? Uh, how do we handle people that approach us? How do you uh, in, overcome those negative stereotypes? We really need to invest in that aspect to improve the quality of life of African American males because there's these stereotypes is what's in, as it's what is fueling this target. Why are African American males such a target? What can we do about it as mentors, as parents, to help uh, help them navigate through this terrain where they're hated and they're targeted? Yeah, but what about black on black violence? How do you handle that? How do you deal with that? The, the, the exact same thing. It is. How do we handle? The, the the violence that that occur in the communities those are all conversations whether it's black on black whether it's by the police officers or the law enforcement we all have a part and particularly uh, young African American males there are things we can do to lessen the likelihood of us getting caught up now no one's immune to random violence but there is some things that we can do as African American males and mentors of males that help lessen the risk. We do a lot of risky behavior. And that's our mission, what we do with this generation, and that's why I write these type of columns. Let's find a way to lessen our risk and improve the quality of our lives. We may not be able to control the criminal justice system, but you can't control your actions and limit the possibility of you getting caught up in something. you got a couple of very basic but very good points. Careful how to respond if you're approached by law enforcement. Learn basic law as well as civil rights. Know what you, know what is going on. Know what you're entitled to, what you're not. These are very basic. You kind of skip over them. But then when you think about it, you, go, you know, Deanne's got a point. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then it's something as simple as knowing the chief of police in your area. Knowing how to approach, how to ask an officer or a person of authority, what is their authority and what have I done wrong to be approached this way? Even goes for the school district. So there's so many life skills lessons that can really have t- can really turn the tide of making stuff uh, and this go escalate or de-escalate. One so last question. Then. Let sure. me ask you one last question. Do you think, as a consequence of this verdict, it's going to get rougher or easier for young black men. Will they be listening to what you're saying and, in fact, following through with it, or will they just be so angry that, in fact, it's going to get worse? Well, I, I, I hope that what comes from this is, number one, two things. Laws need to change. Yeah. Whenever, when, when, when the white, a white person is the victim, laws change. That happened with the OJ. We had all these domestic violence. Remember 1999, the Columbine incident, we had all these laws because most of the victims were Caucasian. I would hope that this high-profile incident gives enough attention that we start looking at our laws, whether it's the stand ground or whatever the issue happened in Florida. Let's, let's change the law so this does not happen again. And on the other side of it, I want young African American males, and my motion is to go directly to them to help empower them to improve their interaction, their relationship. Let's, let's kill all these negative stereotypes. All right. I very much appreciate your coming on. It's Dion Price. And by the way, you can read his column. It's DailyRepublic.com.